welcome. It's your first time here. You're keen in uh, the team from St. Lucia. Yeah, hi. Where is um? Zeno. Okay. Right. And we still have one more team that we're awaiting if they get here, they get here. But we will be live streaming um, to the rest of the staff of Jamaica. Some of us are here, others are not, but we've been getting communications that our others will be attending uh, on the internet. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Kemal, who will brief us on what the talk is about today, and then he will be guiding the speakers through their presentation. All right, thank you, Winston. Uh, so I'm Kemal Brown, CEO of Digital Global Marketing and the President and Executive Director of Cube International. Uh, one is our digital media creative firm. The second is a motivational speaking and training company. So we train both corporates and you know individuals and personal branding, motivational themes, leadership, personal development, things such as that. Um, now the session or my you know, the CCIC is really to help um, three teams. One Eco Carib, the second is Free Labs, and the third, I just started with them, so they didn't lose me, but the, the startup point of name is Devon, right? Um, and we're really helping them get through the customer discovery phase, which of course all startups need to go through to properly, you know, um, validate the issue that they're seeking to solve and then validate their, you know, respective solutions and see if it actually has some put over the marketplace. Um, let me introduce the panel. So we have Giovanni Ryman of Ryman Renewables. Giovanni is a global shaper and he's also a renewables expert, consultant to governments, and he was speaking on, you know, really business, um, how he got where he is. So he'll tell you a bit about his business and how he actually achieved what he has, which is um, really sizable, as he will tell you. His entrepreneurial residence at Dev Labs, so Jeremy does training for young entrepreneurs and startups, um, and very keen to help them get from, you know, idea to execution. And I think one of the most well-known domestic startups and internet featured on BBC, Gordon Swaby is, ed is Edupoka, he's the CEO of Edupoka. He's also a global shaper, I am as well. And he's been featured on the BBC, um, I mean, a plethora of times on domestic um, you know, media. And Gordon's platform is one that basically gamifies the GSAT, Gordon, right? The GSAT um, examination and helps students. He's helped thousands of students really get through their exams. He's also on a few boards. We're going to tell you about that in a bit. But this is our panel. I think they're well versed in their respective success. Um, Jeremy was also CEO on. See on co-founder Jeremy of Agro Central, which was one of the rising stars in the um, domestic space. Um, he won numerous awards. Um, I think one of them was like 25,000 US for one of the awards. Um, so these are individuals that have gone through the processes, especially the customer development phase, getting out and talking to people, which is the pivotal step to actually assess if your problem is actually a problem. So while you might have had respective hypotheses and assumptions, we only get out, we get out of the building, as is commonly said, you know, in Bali language, right? Um, to see if these assumptions are actually valid, and then you can actually go ahead. So your solution, or your respective or the solution that you're proposing, then, is not really important at this stage, right? You need to actually find out what the issue is that the respective customers in your respective customer segments are having. So I'll pass on. We'll just go down the line. Each person will be speaking really about their experience. They're free to stand and move about. I hate sitting personally. Them, just, you know. um, so just please be attentive and feel free to ask questions as we go along because I think we'll be more of a um, you know, discussion that you want to kind of find out what steps they took to reach your respective success. All right, Gio, just going down the line. All right, hi, good morning, everybody. Um, all right, I'm Giovanni Ryman. Um, I'm a solar engineer. I operate this one, which is an exclusive fence um, company, and another one is a much larger scale company. Um, I recently completed the solar farm down in Clarendon, 20 megawatts, 20 megawatts of generating capacity, and currently building another, well, designing and implementing another 160 megawatts here in Jamaica currently. Um, my journey started, um, well, let me backtrack a little bit. I attended Arden High School, I left and went to AISK. Um, when I was entering AISK, I wanted to become a pilot. 
However, when I went and got there and they said that it must be a joker. If you mind, they'll get a commercial bus driver, right? <laughs> so now that got me thinking and stuff, and then immediately during the IB, it wasn't challenging enough. And so started to work right out of graduating hard in high school and then juggling the IB as well and tutoring and doing extracurricular activities as well as pursuing my private pilot license at Trinity Penn. All right. What's the idea? IB is the International Baccalaureate Program. It's like K1 steroids. Um, like steroids, steroids, steroids. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. <laughs> all right. Um, it's renowned all over the world. If you don't, the IB, you don't need to do the SATs and all that stuff because if you're to the IB, you have an IB diploma, yeah, you're like automatically um, graduating second year of university in some regions of the world, okay. especially if you have good, good grades, all right? Um, so, started working for Connect Services. Um, I was a project manager assistant because, yes, I was young, however, I saw that I was capable to you know, manage operations and stuff. And I had a superior who was constantly challenging. Constantly, constantly challenging. My first project when he hired me was to come up with a solution for a grant for the International Development Bank for the Caribbean, right? Come with a renewable energy solution, um, and of course, I did application, put it in, and stuff. And it was considered to an extent. And then he pulled out at the last minute because he didn't want to submit all of this, all of what we found. He said he's going to wait a little bit and implement it himself. He doesn't want the money, <laughs> it's too much valuable for that, right? After that, he said, Okay, then, Joe, go and get certified with your solar, right? The online program. Left and went to Florida, going to the exam under the practical. Um, fast track it in less than a month. And then after that, we started the solar part of the company at that time. At that time, I was about 18. Right? Um, well, of course, we, it was a telecom support company. So we had a lot of manpower, a lot of technical oriented persons. And we had a fleet, we had tools of everything. So just need to get it off the ground. So now, um, based on based on my experience in that regard of being a project manager in training, um, got a lot of resources. Had the, had the money to go there, go there, try new inverters, try try things, and start building and then building and training people and learn about this stuff while doing it. Right. Had immense resources, immense amount of resources and stuff. And of course, you know, we start to build clientele, we start to reach out to hotels and this and that, and you know, you become more prolific in the industry. And at, at that moment in time, I realized that this is what chose me, so I'm choosing because I was good at doing it. And of course, I was, I was always wanting to just build stuff, you know, doing stuff and interact with people and achieving high levels of efficiency. And of course, money is good, it wasn't always good at the beginning. However, I saw that it was important to gain the experience necessary from an early age. Right, and just dealing with people, meeting new people, making them happy with their solar system or their, you know, their battery system or their grid tile systems, how they feel when you turn on the system and it works, you know, all these different things, it mattered to me, right? And of course, the relationship with a team, a team was very, some people come and go, some come under my wings, they go and they start their own company, they can always reach back for me here and there, you know, when you go into corporate entities and they call for me or stuff like that. It's always important, right? Into how you build out who you who you who you interact with, right? And of course, doing that you build a reputation. So after that now, I reach a level of comfort. I'm like, okay, this is getting boring now. Because Connect was dealing with small systems. Most of it was like 15, 15, 15 kilowatts. Um, after that, what it, what they did was they sent me to train. And the company that I currently manage, you know, one of renewable energy developers. Right. First project off the bat was doing digital building. Received many, many awards in what they did and all that stuff. And it was a new challenge. A lot more persons on my payroll. It was a much more expensive system, higher risk. But it was interesting, you understand? Um, so the level of innovation was much more important. It had to be a lot more attentive and stuff. And I wanted two companies to work, but it didn't really work that way. Because one favored me this way and one favored me in that way. Right? 
Um, but of course, I wanted another challenge. So that's why I moved in transition. Because I was becoming of age, I'm like this, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. So let me move on. All right. Um, I said that I was children to be taken care of. I developed certain bills. So let me take this risk at an early age. Of course, you know, I tried to keep the relationship doing going very well between two companies and stuff. But of course, right off the back, I was doing larger stuff. Larger stuff, and you know, it moved from 15 kilowatts to 40 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts. You know, then after after about a year or so, I already installed close to 3,000 solar panels. Already trained nearly 200 persons that come under my wing and I send them back out and stuff. And you know, you just get training in like seven different types of inverters. You, know, you go to Germany, you do this, you do that. You get all your certifications live and ready. You already you have dealt with persons at all the government entities, Bureau of Standards, both to get certain things certified, GI office, JPS of course. You know, you attend all of the high level discussions here with regards to the solar industry. Um, you get to understand the industry ins and outs from not only a bureaucratic point of view, but also from an engineering point of view. Because we do face challenges in industry. I need to understand them before. So, therefore, when you meet clients, you can let them become conscious of it. And then you can also provide them with a solution. And if you're comfortable, clients want comfort. When they're spending money, as anybody here will know, when they're spending money, you have to achieve a certain level of comfort, right? And it's my responsibility to give them that, give them what they want, because that's what they're going to pay for, right? They want to get rid of wasting money with um, energy from the utility companies. Yes, they want to own it, and yes, it's a fun thing. For some clients, it's like buying a Mercedes Benz. Yeah, it's something to brag about and talk about. Some people, it makes economic sense. Some people, it's like a retirement accomplishment you know yes i can afford a system and yes i want i want the best and for some people just getting the services of ryman renewables or renewable energy developers or having geo installed system means a lot to them right you know jamaica is small the carbon is small so you know one person network with another and they just have a, like a feeding ground because based on experience that you have that's what the business entails right now so um after that, we did a couple projects here and there, and then I went, and there was a bid for the, com the commercial farm. The only content, yes, the numbers were big. Nobody locally had any other experience. The only people that had it were like either Central Americas or like um, Dominican Republic and uh, Puerto Rico and those places. But yet still, there was something about our company, why we were called to the board, right? Because they were there were there. in Jamaica, you have like about 40 or 50 different solar companies. But then they said, Okay, Gio, I want you to do the job. And then my business partner, who is from Holland, he said, Gio, it's your decision. If you want to do it, you do it. I don't care. Because frankly, it don't make any money sense to me. Listen, we can create jobs, we can create a reputation. Yes, I want the experience, and to get experience, it's going to cost somebody, it's not going to cost us. So, might as well execute, right? And you have to change and adapt to certain situations like that, especially for how the market is moving. First, the hurdles initially two years ago was financing these systems or letting people understand what, what is going on, right? But development has been done in industry. People talk and, you know, there's been trade shows and whatever the case, and now it's just a matter of execution. And what you want to execute, do you want to go the cheap way? Do you want to go through the banks? Or do you just want to buy it outright? Most people right now, well, my clients are many outright because they see that it's what makes sense, right? So yes, I need to facilitate that type of movement. However, I see what they want. They want support. I can give them the support that they need from a design point of view, from um, the engineering point of view. So it's like a one-stop shop, right? I mean, I have clients that building houses here in Jamaica, but they don't live here. For example, fly overseas to Canada or to the US. Just meet to them, deliver engineering drawings to them. Okay, these are the type of products that I can get you. These are what I am willing to work with. If you don't want to work with it, I'm sorry, I'm not the guy for you. Right? Because I have worked with immense amounts of products. I know what works, I know what doesn't work. So it has reached that level right now where they're ready to engage in those type of conversations. All right? Um, in doing all of this, 
as I, I just want to pinpoint that relationships is very important for you treat people, for you pay people, because you will be faced with a lot of money. What you do with that money is important. You pay your, your team very well. Do they feel happy enough to come to work? Do they feel honored to work for your work with you? Do they have pride in what they're doing? Does your mentality come across the board then? I'm a perfectionist. If you put up crappy insulation, I won't be the one to tell you. I'll just come and I'll just laugh my head off and fall on the ground. And they'll say, hey, Gio, what's up? Um, I just don't stand and walk out. And then, like, last week, a guy called me at 2 o'clock in the morning. The guy who was installing some trunking on the wall, around the wires in. So, boy, Gio, you know what? I don't like this trunking you're buying. Up. In the morning, I rip it out. Just make sure you reach a morning with, like, 10 more length of trunking. Better quality. Because they, they know so that if they don't do it, it it's going to. It's gonna affect them more than me. Mm -hmm. And they need a constant supply of work and they're generating that based off how they work. Mm -hmm. And I've been training these persons from I don't really take people from university, I must be outright. And I'll be like, I'll let that be known. I take security guards, I take country people, I take people from all over. I don't judge people. Man, woman, child, I don't care. Child, you don't make <laughs> no, as in, you know, once you graduate high school and stuff, I do mentor kids into the whole industry and thing, but as far as personal 60, 70 years old, years old, um, age old they work for me, right? Um, it's just a matter of do you click with the team? Do you can you listen? Can you evolve? Can you think? Can you make decisions? At first, when I started out. They used to call me and I used to make all the decisions. Now it's, they call me, okay, Gio, this is what I am doing. Need, get it done. Okay, fine, no problem. You hire people, you have a team around you to ease the pressure of you so you can do what you need to do. So you can achieve high levels of efficiency, right? But that's later on down in operations and how you manage your projects and your team. That's important. It's not just getting clients or dealing with the money or counting this or do that. You understand? more of the relationship that you need to facilitate and make people happy and making people happy is what makes me happy the more jobs i can create the more i can pay my guys the more you know just making them feel happy is what's important to me and, and after you see me i don't have to do it anymore like always just flows from clients to suppliers to relationships with other Installers in industry and designers, even in Germany and stuff. I mean, recently I was summoned by the Ministry of Energy in Germany to attend a conference for a fact finding commission based on my experiences in the solar industry here in Jamaica and the Caribbean at large, right? So, those type of stuff is like a feeding ground. Everybody's looking at Jamaica and they're looking at who does the best stuff here so that they can really roll out, right? So, um, that's pretty much what I have to offer. Um, are there any questions? I'll, I'm pretty open. One thing before you ask the question and answer, Gio, I want yes. you to touch on the fact um, we were discussing as, you, as we were driving. Yes. You were speaking to the fact that you had to you knew your customers inside and out. Yes. You talk to them over and over and over again, consistently through his career. He facilitated that early on, rather than going out to people, he was already talking to them from before. So when he launched, come so can you touch on that a bit? That process okay. of actually validating that you knew what they wanted because you had actually spoken to them so many times and frequently okay and consistent all right so start with that funny went to red um already dealt with certain insulations and certain different types of clients dealt with the bankers dealt with engineers dealt with doctors and these are wide area of persons all these people have different types of personalities they all have different needs some people don't want don't care about their insulation some people do so I was always conscious to how they think, what do they want, right? How can I give them the best system, best system for me in terms of price, insulation, quality, maintenance, and all that stuff, and feasibility to build out, right? What did you compromise because you knew the relationship? In other words, money, money in my pocket. You compromised money in your pocket. Because you knew that they were going to keep ordering stuff from you or get you more customers. What people don't understand, well, it's maybe a generalization, but 
in Jamaica, Jamaica is too small for you to make quick money really fast, right? Mm -hmm. And the conceptualization of that needs to be understood. Instead of having one contract where you need to make $10 million off, why not have 10 contracts of $800 million off? While you're within market price, they're both, but the client love it. They love it. They call you and say, okay, let's go drink this evening. Or let's go eat a fish. And that's when they introduce to their family. Right. You know, that relationship is much more important than just, hey, I'm going to sneak around and say, okay, I'm going to charge you this because I feel I can get away with it. It's because of information. People know what the costs of things are. One thing you can get away with this is just the engineering services cost, really and truly. And what are the levels of efficiency you can get materials at based on your relationship with the suppliers and how well you know the industry so you don't get all these costs to drain you down as operational costs like how can you manage that to know say okay then i need this chunk of the pie and i can't tell you this is the chunk of the pie i'm getting by being honest with the clients or the stakeholders in the business so everything is transparent so you don't need to be looking over your shoulder because it's distracting at times all right so yes i know i know the different types of clients and how to facilitate pricing or to facilitate quality and the compromise i'm willing to make with regards to what i work with who i'm working with you understand so in terms of certain types of products i won't work with it if you're telling me to, if you're telling me what to do i'm not going to work with you because i have the experience and yes i'm willing to listen and i'm willing to compromise to an extent when i know that's going to be detrimental to my reputation and it's going to make me and my team and my team and i very uncomfortable we're not we're engaging because i don't i've achieved that level of comfort right now whereby i don't need to run down every rabbit hole you understand mm -hmm. you need to be comfortable in what you're doing i mean let me give an prime example of a client right in Mayfair, and we got the material today and we started to I'll wrap it up okay. ask a question, please. all right cool no, no problem. come back if anything about after the session all right, no problem. Let me just finish off it. I had a client and they started the installation. Um, it was about 200 and something panels and we finished in like 24 hours. From 7 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock the following morning. And the guy just did it. I didn't have to tell him what to do. He said, listen, get light. The owner went and got some floodlights and stuff. So by light in the night, give them food and whatever the case. And it's the relationship with the client and my, my team. And just smash. And the guy brought down all his friends from all over the world to come and see the system and was so proud of it and Facebook and all that stuff. Relationship is important. You know what you're doing, I need to be conscious of what you're doing. You need to have good money management skills. You need to manage your projects wisely. All right, thank you very much. So, next, um, we have Gordon Swedish team. Gordon, what I love about Gordon's business and how he executes is the similar thing, relationships. He understands it as a fundamental level, the importance of building relationships, but not just relationships, actually caring about people and actually you know knowing how to maneuver your respective industry. So what you can go ahead and show sure. morning everybody. Still early, right? No. Yeah. Evening. No, it's still one. So, thank you for inviting me. Come on. Great um, talk, Joe. I'm here to talk about the importance of relationships in the startup world, but I'm going to change it a bit. I'm not going to talk about the importance of relationships in the startup world i'm going to talk about the importance of relationships overall now i read an article recently which spoke about trust and trust and relationships go hand in hand and this article spoke about the relationship between trust and the poverty level of a country in other words the poorer countries the less trust you have the less trust you have the harder it is for things to get done. So I'll give examples of things that are extremely hard to do in Jamaica. Opening a bank account, and I say hard, I mean relatively speaking, when compared to uh, opening a bank account, establishing a co um, you know, incorporating your company, um, getting a, a cell phone, you know, a number of things. You know, it it's it's hard. Even things are hard in Jamaica. So I remember. I can't remember which country it is right now, but I went to a country once and I saw that they had the newspapers, right? And how it worked is that you didn't have somebody who collected money from you to give you the newspaper. 
what happens is that you put your money down, you take up the newspaper, and as a trust relationship, it's based on trust, and it blew my mind. I'm like, wow, I'd never think about something like that happening in Jamaica. Now, I'm not a big fan of Anansi, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they don't understand the concept of Anansi well, but for me, Anansi is known as a trickster, somebody who is always trying to pull a fast one. And in all, I mean, there are so many instances you can think, and I mean, most of us in here are Jamaican, and I'm sure you've been in scenarios where if you're, if you're from the Caribbean, you feel like, you know, somebody's trying to get a one of them. Whether it's you're buying a car, you want to know this person is, 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 is you know, is trying to do a fast one. And there's this question you always ask somebody. So why are you selling it? Because in your head, I wonder if this person is legit. I wonder if I can trust this person, right? And that's, that's a constant theme. Um, when you're doing business in Jamaica. Now, Gio touched on some of the things that you know are important. And for me, you can't really get anything done as fast as you'd want without trust and relationships. And I'll give you specific examples. I'll give you an early one, and I'll give you uh, one, half that, one that happened recently. So for those who don't know, um, or you're not familiar with what Google is, Educocal is an online social learning service for students preparing for the examinations. We use a concept called gamification to make learning fun. And gamification is the use of game-like elements in non-game context. So we have two core parts of the service, um, service, a leaderboard and an experience point system. Students pay a subscription fee to sign up to the service. It's $15 or 1,500 JMB per month. Answering questions, once they're answering your questions, they're an experience points. And move from one that is the next. Why do you bring up? You're ranked on a leaderboard and you're competing against other students on a platform. From Bankati Primary or a student from Game Prep, you're all competing with each other for the number one spot on the EduFocal platform. Every year, we have something called the EduFocal Excellence Awards where we give our top GSAT and top CSEC student on the EduFocal platform $30,000 each. So we've been doing that for the last four years. Next year will be our fifth year. We're actually five years old next year. Now, I remember when I started out, had a lot of problems. Um, I thought that I had the best thing ever. And, you know, once you build something, people will come and, you know, you don't need to do anything else. So I thought that once I presented this great idea to people, they'd immediately come on board. And I was very, very much mistaken. So I remember reaching out to a bunch of different stakeholders. I remember reaching out to dealer in Jamaica. They said to me that, you know, one, they're not going to be giving me any of their content because I needed content. couldn't afford to develop content. The blue me off said I have to make my service free. I said, I'm not making my service free, it's going to be paid. So the blue me blew me off. I went to Observer, the Jamaica Observer, because they have a CXE study guide section and a GSAT study guide section, which they publish on a weekly basis. Blew me off. Um, that, at that point in time, I think the person who was running the company, the Observer was Ed Curry, right? Blew me off, said that they're not interested in doing a partnership, which I do focus on, and they get these offers all the time. I said, all right, cool, no problem. I was not, you know, deterred. I decided that I'm going to go forward with this, no matter what, because I know that I have something good. One morning, I got a call from Nogam at Dollar Life. For the Jamaicans in the room, you know who Nogam at Dollar Life is. And you know her, her accent. So I had just, the call had woken me up, and I'm, so I said, I said, hello. She said, hi, Gordon. It's Novia. So I said, okay. So she said to me, um, she heard that I'm one of the up and coming entrepreneurs. Jamaica, she wants to do an interview with me. So I said, All right, sure, no problem. Do you know who I am? Yeah, because I guess she was not getting the kind of reception that she expected. So I said, Okay, cool. Went and did the, the, the interview, and it was a bunch of us in the room. In fact, I'll call it the one percenters of Jamaica that were in that room. I was the only one who was not a part of the, the one percentile in Jamaica. Still not a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm getting here. laughs> Working at it. So, conversations with each other because of course they were all familiar with each other prior to that. And I'm a country boy, I come from Christiana, um, didn't know any of these people. So they were talking to each other. I never forget one conversation I had about one person sinking their boat. You know, yeah man, the boat, you know, it sink recently, but you know, we're getting another one. I'm just here on my phone. <laughs> you know, you're in your space and you don't know anybody, you're just on your phone. So I was in there on my phone and I didn't know anybody. So Novia came in shortly after, and then we started to have a conversation about different topics, the economy, and so on. Now, I know a lot about the economy, what is happening, politics, and so on. 
And I mean, I was considered a bright star in the room and everybody was impressed. And just in passing, I said, you know, I had reached out to the observer once for a partnership and it blew me off. He said, no, no, no. You know, we're having a new managing director, Zandon Walker. He needs to come and meet him, definitely. So I said, okay. And I said, cool, I'll come and meet Danville. Went and I met Danville. Um, and I, again, I'll never forget his experience. It was a bunch of like, very experienced people in the room and were negotiating the contract. I was the only one in the room from Eddie Pover. We negotiated the contract, we negotiated, came to an agreement, contract was signed. The contract was that, um, so I reached out to the Observer for content, as you remember. That's what I wanted from the Observer initially. When the contract was signed, they were paying me every week, um, got content, um, got months of advertisement space in the paper, and up to this day, because we still have the partnership, we, I have a permanent spot in the Observer on page three, of the career and education section in the Sunday Observer, every Sunday. So, I don't know if you know, but everybody knows that the Observer has never made money. Right? It's not, it's made for Bootstrap to make money. It's his PR machine. Now, I just want you to understand the value of what I'm saying. For the Observer to have paid me, and they don't pay me anymore, but I mean, this was very valuable because I had just started it before. But to be getting money every month, you know, set income, that was great. So for the observer to have paid me <laughs> means that I must have done exceedingly well in this in this negotiation process. Anyway, all of that was great. And the point I want to make is that that would not have happened if not for Novia. Novia was sold on me. And anybody can come up with a great idea, but nothing happens without relationships, right? And that's the first example of it happening. And that that what that one thing led to another thing because you know more people started to get to know me, and you know success breeds success. Um, once you get that traction and once you can maintain it, you're good to go. And I've said to people that marketing for Asian people, um, great to start. No, I mean as in proper marketing, never paid for it. Um, Asian people is five years old um, next year, and ever ever since the day that we've launched, we've gotten. Since we've launched, we've gotten good traction in the media. This year was the first year that we got our biggest international feature, which was in the BBC. We were on BBC World News. We were on BBC.com, as in the front page of BBC.com. The story was so popular, it was on the front page of BBC. And um, we were on, so it's radio, TV, and online. All of your channels. And of course, that feature led to something else. Because again, it's a spiraling effect, and it's all about relationships. Somebody seeing and trust. So somebody seeing me on BBC or seeing Eddie Football on BBC meant that, oh, this guy must is trustworthy, he must be doing something good. But of course, somebody reached out to me, a bunch of people reached out to me, and of course, um, there's things that are in development now that I won't really talk about. But it's all actually you can't talk about one and not talk about the other. It's getting people to trust you, especially in a low trust society like Jamaica. Trust is important in countries like the USA, but even so more important in countries in poor countries where everybody, there are so many people that are getting ripped off. So trust is extremely important. But that's the earlier story. I'll tell you the, the story that happened recently. There's a particular business manager in that I've always wanted to get to know better. I admire the person. Um, it has done exceedingly well in his business. And I say, you know, I must get to know this man at all. Fine. I remember reaching out. So we all ended up at this, you know, we ended up at the same events together. And I'd see him and I'd introduce myself to him and he'd forget me each time. Mm. So I know that business man. You know, so every time he you know he sees me, he'd forget who I am. Every time. I see me and I say, you know what? No, I'm not getting him up until this guy know my name and I he's <laughs> going to call to me. Mm -hmm. Always see him and then I tried I tried different strategies. I had one of my friends introduce him to me. He still didn't remember who I am. Every time he'd see me, he'd forget. Anyway, we both got appointed to a board. Um, we got appointed to the same board recently. And I won't say which board, you know what I'm talking about. But we got appointed to a board recently. And he's undertaking this initiative right now. And I have I've been very vocal about this part of it. So with the exchange numbers I we started talking, we've gotten close over time and about two weeks ago he invited me over to his house for, for you know Geo mentioned something he invited me over to his house for, for drinks, right? Come over a bottle of vintage as he said. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've made progress with this guy. No, he not no no not only is he remembering my name, he's inviting me to his personal space for drinks. Mission accomplished. Trust. Trust. Now that trust and that relationship means that I can now take up the phone, 
and call this person and say, hey, I need so-and-so. Can you help me out? And you have to understand that there's a difference between somebody referring you to somebody and say, I know this person, help him out. And somebody referring you, that same person referring you to somebody and say, I know this person and I trust him. I want you to help him, right? Because it's almost like trust is transferable. Yeah. If somebody trusts you, it means that when they, if they trust you, it means that when they reach out to their network, when they open their Rolodex and they look at people who they know and people who respect them, when they say, I want so-and-so to happen, that you can, you can be guaranteed that that person is going to move mountains to ensure that you're helped and the person who they reach out is going to help you because they don't want to damage that relationship. Right? And you have to understand that not everybody is going to go out and just automatically make that available to you. Right? You can't you can just meet somebody for the first time and expect it because you have to understand that if you scroll, your relationship is also going to be damaged with other people. So you want to ensure that whoever whoever you want to get to know that you develop a relationship with them further, you want to connect with somebody else, you have to develop a relationship with them. Especially you realize the attraction. He had built something that people were proud of associating with. So it wasn't like he just met someone at a, at a function or a party or something and said, hey, I'm keeping in touch. I'm trying to get my idea off the, the ground. No, he had done the groundwork. He had built something up. And then on the basis of that, he was respected, respect he was trust. And you know, trust is the key to being believable. And when people believe you, they act up on your behalf. And last story, and this is not related to me, but I was reading something yesterday about a guy who, and that's another thing, unrelated, but read as much as possible. Uh, reading a story about a guy who missed out on an investment in Uber. Uh, he was having dinner with a friend who knows Travis, and Travis is the founder of, of Uber. He was having a conversation with a mutual friend of, of Travis, and he was, the guy was saying to him, look, you need to talk to this Travis guy. He has a great thing going on. Um, you don't want to miss out on this opportunity. And the guy missed out on the opportunity, and you know how Uber turned out. And again, it's two guys who are great friends sitting together at dinner, talking about a very small business at the time, this guy was telling this guy to get to know this guy because he has a lot of potential. And really, that is all that it is. I mean, I went to San Francisco for the first time recently, and it's, it's the same thing. The same thing applies. I mean, clearly there's more trust there because it's, it's a bigger, you know, it's a bigger space and so on. But it all boils down to trust. Trust, like, trust and relationships. That's all it boils down to. I would say that every single thing, outside of having a great product and me being a trustworthy person, it has all been about relationships and relationships that I've developed over time. And not only do you need to develop these relationships, but you need to maintain them. Right? It's very, very important that you maintain these relationships. And final thing, I said to people all the time, there are six billion people on earth. You could be the smartest, the brightest person on earth, and you build the best product ever. If nobody knows you, nobody's going to open any doors for you. You have, you have to ensure that when somebody's thinking about a great person for a particular opportunity or thing, that you come to mind that, oh, yeah, man. This person is a great person. Because you're not going to evaluate all six billion people on earth to see who is the best um, person for this, for, you know, for this, for this job. Call it nepotism, call it what you want. At the end of the day, people want to be associated with people who are trustworthy and can get the job done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Any questions? Just two. My question is. Okay. Yeah, so two quick questions. questions. Yeah. My question is um, you said to maintain the relationship. Um, do you have any pointers on how to do that? All right, open the Excel file, write everybody's name, and record the last time you spoke to them. That's how I did it. <laughs> Outside of that, it means social media is one of the best things that's ever been invented. I curate my spaces very well, especially Twitter. Uh, and I, I, I mean, for some people, it's harder to honest. Clearly, if you're an introvert, Networking and socializing is extremely, it's going to be extremely hard for you. It's not something that you like to do. I found a reason that I'm an, I'm a, as long as like I'm a trained extrovert, I, I do get exhausted in social spaces. I stay home most of the time. But I love social media, particularly Twitter. Twitter has worked very well for me. A lot of the influencers and movers and shakers in Jamaica are on Twitter. And it's easy to establish relationships with people. One particular group of people that I encourage you to establish a relationship with are journalists. In your circle, um, and again, I've always thought, thought about that. And I mean, I read something recently which spoke about building your brand and having journalists in your circle is extremely important. I was fortunate enough that my first and only job ever was at the Bina Company, so I managed to develop relationships with a lot of journalists. I'm gonna have to cut you on that note. Yeah, man.
uh, on the basis. But I think that was a uh, excellent, excellent, um, you know, value laden presentation, right? So any other questions? You can ask one. So thank you for having me. So yes. So now Jeremy and Henry. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for coming here today. Um, I'll have to cut mine out to be short. I have a call after this, but thanks to Money for you know giving presentation before. Um, so I will start off um, by telling you my, my story, Agri Central. Then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about idea validation, and then I'll give you another story based on a friend um, that I know and his process of idea validation. So I had a startup. Ever Central, it was born of a startup weekend in 2014, right? I thought it was the greatest idea ever. Everybody thought it was the greatest idea ever. However, none of these persons who thought it was the greatest idea were actually in MIT customers. So I walk around, you know, my head held high, thinking I have the coolest thing in the world, and I'm here trying to sell it to people who, I'm here trying to sell it to people who aren't buying. I'm here talking to people who aren't even relevant to what I am trying to do, right? So after a while, I'm realizing I'm not getting any results. I'm not making any money. What is happening? All right. So I set out and I, I set out and said, okay, well, maybe the reason I'm not making any money is because I don't have any money. Because you know, we all have this thing, oh, you need money to make money. You don't need money to make money. You need to create value to make money. All right. So I say, okay, well, maybe I need money. So I start entering competitions and applying for grants and doing all these things. Right? And eventually the money did come. But I'm not burning the money. Still not making any money. I'm wondering what is the problem, right? And then I met someone, and they were like, "Okay, well, why do you need money to start this?" And I explained to them, "I said, well, if you want to provide value, you don't really need money. What you need to do is understand what you're doing, understand who you're doing it for, and understand how exactly you're going to accomplish your goal that you want to accomplish." Right? So I said, "Okay, cool. Let me." Rethink my whole strategy. Let me start actually talking to the persons who would be my customers, right? And I start talking to the persons who would be my customers. I start asking them certain questions, and I realize what I'm doing, what I was doing was complete bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a problem, but it's not solvable very in a, in a software platform, and it's not something that I can accomplish, right? And sometimes I admit that you can't accomplish that goal, but if you care about the person or you care about the business that you're trying to solve the problem for and you're trying to work with, then you can just change what you're doing to actually face the problems that you're having. So after a while, we realized, OK, what we're doing now is not what customer wants. So initially, what we're doing was trying to have persons connect to new suppliers. But persons are actually having problems managing their existing suppliers. And then after talking to all the customers, and actually making the people and change. I realized I started getting results. I started getting customers like Grace, um, Carita Limited, uh, Juicy Pool. You know, I was able to actually get some stuff done. I was able to get contracts signed. Money was starting. Money was starting to come in. So, pretty apart from that, I am now away from that startup. And the reason why I'm away from the startup is not because I did not do the validation. It's just because of other internal issues. Just go to prove that without the validation, you can be wasting your time. And I'm sure a lot of you are still in the discovery stage, and you know you have this idea. You think it's the greatest thing. Some and everybody's as lucky as Gordon that they have the great thing right off the bat. Some of us actually have. Most of us actually have. That wasn't my first idea. Okay, and it wasn't wasn't his first idea. So that's good to know also. So to know that you know what you have is good it might be good but you need to validate it and the only way to validate it is to one speak to the persons who you actually want to solve the problem for or you actually want to provide value right and i don't mean just speak to them as gordon said before form the relationship that you got a person are so close that they're open to talking to the problems in your business that they would want to talk to anybody about or they're open to just having a conversation with you if you listen properly, then you can pick up the value that you can provide to that person with the skills and everything that you have. So the second story is actually from a guy I um, consider a guy called Steady FT. I consume a lot of his content. He was a company called Close.io, right? So he 
he was in a little bit, he was in a, in a phase where he was thinking about what do I want to do next. So he came up with an idea, said, okay, I want to do a scalable sales um, services company for start for venture back startups. So he said, okay, how do I validate this, right? So you know, some people spend weeks, months, years validating an idea. He took up the phone, made up a fake name, wrote a sales script, and he called over 100 people, right? He spent for two weeks, he validated, he validated his idea, and he actually got 10 customers, right? But think about me doing AgroCentral, I did it for about a year and a half before I figured out what the hell I was doing. In two weeks, I was able to validate it and actually start a money-making business, right? So that's just the value of getting to people and actually building a relationship, talking to them, and understanding what the problems are, right? So for startups, basically you have four stages, right? In a startup, you have discovery, you have validation, and then the other two, they go by different names. We call them efficiency and scale, right? In discovery, where a lot of people here are, um, you are basically, how you just have an idea. You have an idea, or you have a problem that you want to solve, or you know the customer that you want to solve a problem, right? And in this stage, you don't have to, you shouldn't be worried about anything else. You say, oh, how am I going to, how am I going to hire this? You know, people, you know, we worry about that. We worry about a lot of different things in this stage, right? You say, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to afford this? No, none of that matters. The only thing that matters right now is how, you know, what's the problem? How can I solve the problem? Who am I solving the problem for, right? And that is just going out there and talking to those, I'll put that 10, talk to 10 people from a deep relationship with those 10 customers and keep on going back to them with what you have. As you move forward to the validation stage, the validation stage is a stage where you start thinking about, okay, uh, I have an idea of, I have an idea of exactly what I want to do for this person that should solve this problem. You build it out or you maybe do some mock-ups or maybe just write a proposal and you pour it presents to that person and say, okay, what do you think of this? And you get that feedback, right? And validation goes up to about a million dollars in revenue, right? So, and I'm not talking Jamaica, I'm talking, <laughs> if you're doing a big market in Jamaica, it would be a lot less, but the thing about it is that validation, it goes very far, right? And inefficiency, efficiency when you've gotten to that point where you know you have product market fit and you understand that what you're doing is exactly what the customer wants and you provide value and you have metrics and you can look at it and say, I am doing this for people, right? And then inefficiency you start thinking about how much it cost me to get to the customer. When you're trying to make your business fluid and you're trying to make everything as controlled as possible, well, where we all want to reach, where you get to that point where you can just, you know, go into, you can get to, you know, millions of customers, you can approach an IPO, you can do all those kind of things, right? So think about where you are right now. Think about what you have to do in the stage that you're at and try not to go and think about too many things. Think about, you know, efficiency or the scale stage. Hey, all those activities aren't relevant to you until you actually solve a problem for somebody, understand what you are doing and some things. Those three things are the three most important things when you're just starting out. As you move forward, then you can start thinking about all other things. But for me, all I can say is just develop those relationships. And that has been the whole, that has been the topic, you know, since we've been here, developing relationships with the customer, developing relationships with the partner, developing relationships with your employees, and just developing relationships with other startups here, right? You guys can share information. Everybody has similar struggles, you know? All of us are, most of us, except for Winston, are millennials. Um, and our millennials, we both, we, 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 we have, you know, we share, we share a certain culture, we share a certain, you know, we, we share, we share, we share certain experiences, and we understand certain things with each other. Uh, so please don't be afraid to, you know, reach out to each other, you know, and building those um, personal relationships and you guys can help each other out. You, everybody here knows somebody else who knows somebody, right? You know, you know, Gordon, you have to build some, you have to, you have to build up a reputation, Gordon, you have to build a reputation, <laughs> Kemal, you know, we are, they have everybody here, you know, you have access to them. You have to build that trust with them to know that, okay, you know, maybe they can give an introduction there, an introduction here, but you have to prove yourself. 
and you have to prove yourself to build those relationships and get it going. So thank you very much. Please get to know everybody. Yeah. I should take a call at 12, so once again, I can. Oh, yeah. It's 12 right now. It's, yeah, it's 12 now. Right so, right. right, okay. I hope you. you see the prevailing themes that are coming out of the discussions. Right. Um, stay in the phase that you're at. Interestingly, everything is phase based. So even when you get your first like 10 customers, don't worry about the thousand, don't worry about the next 100, one order of magnitude, right? Just think about it like that. So that you get to scale. Why not even get, you have to get to scale, but at least you can, you know, ma it's manageable. Because having 100 people on your platform and looking at what what's happening, trying to set up infrastructure by having 100,000 people is very, very distinct. But even in terms of relationships, I didn't have to do much to get this final together. What's up? Hey, Gordon, I need you here. Check your diary. You're free? Gio, you're free? But not everybody can just reach out to them and get them anywhere. You understand? Right. It's tied to the fact that I wouldn't be bringing them somewhere, asking them to present somewhere that wouldn't want to be adding value. Two, be adding value to their brands as well as you know the community. And three, wouldn't be wasting their time because everybody here is an entrepreneur that's super busy, right? including myself. So that relationship, just being able to pick up a phone because of the trust, the world didn't see what I'm doing, right? I see what he's doing, whether I'm mutual. I think our first, this first talk, this first time we spoke was on social media. I see what you're doing. Let me see you. All right. <laughs> that was literally the conversation. That was it. All right. Gio, we met through Shape Us, which is a World Economic Forum community for young leaders that seek to shape the world. World hates that pun, but I use it nonetheless. Um, um, <laughs> and that's how I met Gio. Right? So, I mean, it's all about relationships. And as Gordon said, one point that he made is fundamental success breeds success. You can't be successful. You don't have to look for success if you're a successful person. People gravitate to you based on the fundamental law of attraction in the universe. You have to fight for it once you put out the work, right? And actually get something that works. There are thousand ideas, but no execution comes. And executing in such a way that will help you win because there's systems to success, there's no secrets. And if you have situations where all these, everybody here has gone through some level of success, building multi million dollar businesses, all of us have that, right? So if you're looking and you're listening and you're actually keen on hearing what people that have actually tread the path that you hope to tread are doing and have done to reach where they are, your success is not assured, but at least you won't fail as much. And failure is fine, by the way. Expect to fail a few times. Can I make a final point before I go? Definitely. Um, one interesting thing I've found just in, in, in business is that who you talk to is important. And what you talk to them about is important also. But the conversation that you may have with somebody is also in the same space as you in terms when I say space, I mean you're at the same in terms of getting to the next level, you're you know, they're at the same level with you. The conversation that you're having with them or having with people in that space is different from the conversation you have with somebody who is a billionaire. Right? So for example, I can have a conversation with somebody and I say, Yeah man, I raised half a million US this year or you know, I want to, you know, I want to do this or do that. And on it can be, 